what is up youtube folks we just finished doing a full set review of march of the machine on twitch they will be uploaded to youtube shortly but before we say goodbye i just wanted to quickly go over all of the five praetors and their respective sagas someone in chat had mentioned that we should do a tier maker to rank the power and scariness of these five new transforming praetors so let's do it um, the first one we have is, um, wait, hold on. Let me actually, if I bring up the card preview in front of this, okay, cool. So let's, let's do this one at a time. So Elish Norn is first. Um, Elish Norn is two white, white. So it's fairly affordable. For a 3-5 Praetor with Vigilance, whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you or a an opponent you control, that source's controller loses two life unless they pay one. So there's a little bit of a tax, um, but otherwise Elish Norn could do nothing. Um, pay two and a white to sacrifice three other creatures you control. Exile Elish Norn and bring it onto the battlefield. Um, transformed so face value I think Elish Norn is like a C I think its front face is a little bit scary the tax is interesting um, but it's only one you only have to pay one to stop it from doing anything so it's like being utterly afraid of Thalia you just have to handle Thalia you pay the extra stuff or whatever. So on, on its face, not that terrifying. Um, the back of Elish Norn says that it's called the Argent Etchings. Chapter one is incubate two five times, then transform all incubator tokens you control. So assuming you don't have any incubator tokens yet, at the very least, this, this makes you five two twos which is pretty great. Then chapter two, creatures you control get plus one, plus one and gain double strike until end of turn. So that means you get five, three threes with double strike. So that's 15, 30 damage. 30 damage. Oh, okay. And then chapter three, destroy all permanents except for artifacts, lands and Phyrexians. Exile the Argent etchings and return it to the battlefield front face up uh so then it board wipes everything assuming all of your stuff are phyrexians or lands or artifacts it board wipes everything except for your stuff um i think the backside of elish norn the elish norn saga is an a so quick recap um, Elish Norn front face, B. It's annoying. It could be a little harmful. It's not scary. Um, the backside of Elish Norn is pretty terrifying. Includes a board wipe. Um, if nothing happens to any of your creatures, you're doing 30 damage on Saga, saga Chapter 2. Uh, that's terrifying. Uh, okay, so next up we will look at Ginny G. Jin Gataxis is three blue blue for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Praetor. So it's one more mana, but it's a 5-5, five, five, so it actually does good damage. It has Ward 2, so it protects itself a little bit. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell with mana value 3 or greater, draw a card. So it cantrips all of your expensive sorceries, enchantments instance um or battles even it actually cantrips a lot of things so that's pretty good um then you pay three and a blue to exile Jin Kataxis, then return it to the battlefield transformed activate only if you have seven or more cards in hand so this is where it gets a little bit tricky is because you have to accumulate seven cards in your hand um which is is useful because of the cantripping ability um, but you're going to need some draw card spells in your hand um, and in your deck in order to really help this pop off. Um, 
So it might be difficult to transform, but I think the front face of this is better than the front face of Alish Norn. It's not terrifying. A 5-5 five five with Ward 2 is pretty good. Um, a 5-5 five five with Ward 2 that also turns your expensive non-creature spells into cantrips is even better. Um, so I would say... I would say it's a B. It's it's definitely better than Elish Norn. Um, but is it the same? It's not the same power as Elish Norn's Saga. So the next up is the Great Synthesis. This is Jin Kataxis's Saga. Chapter 1. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size for as long as you control the Great Synthesis. So this is interesting because... You need seven cards in hand in order to transform Jingataxis into the Great Synthesis. So immediately, you draw seven more cards. So you have 14 cards in your hand. And you have no maximum hand size, so you don't have to discard them for another two turns. But just wait, because you won't have to discard them. Chapter 2, return all non-Phyrexian creatures to their owner's hands. So it bounces everything but Phyrexians. So there is a, a way that this card kind of whiffs a bit. If the card, if you're playing against someone with Praetors or Phyrexians, sorry, then this isn't going to bounce much of their stuff. But if you're playing against people that are playing humans or knights or whatever, um, this will bounce their entire board. It could also potentially bounce your entire board because you don't always have just Phyrexians in your deck. Um, so chapter two is useful in some cases, but could also whiff. Not great. Chapter three, you may cast any number of spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. Exile the great synthesis, then return it to the battlefield front face up. So that, four, that stack of 14 cards you have, you can cast any number of them without paying their mana cost. You can dump your whole hand in Chapter 3. I mean, assuming you don't put absolute stinkers in your deck, that's like game over. I mean, that has to be tier S tier. Has to be S tier. So right now we've got the Great Synthesis is S tier. Argent Etchings is A tier. Jinkataxia's front side is B tier, and Elish Norn is C tier. Uh, next up, we will take a look at our friendly Black Praetor Shieldred. Uh, Shelly is three black black for a four five Phyrexian Praetor with Menace. It's kind of sad she doesn't have lifelink or death touch in this set, but that's fine. She lost her lower half. Maybe that's where her poison was being held. Um, they have Menace. When Shieldred enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker. I mean, that's not that great, right? You pay four and a black to exile Shieldred, then return it onto the, onto the battlefield, transformed under its owner's control, activate only as a sorcery, and only if an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. So the front side is not scary it's a four five with menace that kills one of your things a non-token one of my things but it's really not like there's so many cards that just do that um you also can't transform it until your opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard um So, I mean, like, if if you play this on turn 5 and try to transform it on turn 6, like, there's plenty of games I've played where the opponent only has one or two cards in their graveyard by turn 6. So you can't even transform this for who knows how long. I think this is a D-tier front face. 
I think this is our first D tier. I think Elish Norn is a little bit scarier on the front than this one is. Um, just a tiny bit. Uh, let's take a look at Shieldred's Saga, the true scriptures. So this one is absolutely terrifying. Chapter 1, for each opponent, destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls. So this is interesting because unlike the front phase, um, which your opponent sacrifices something, you get to choose on the back phase here. So you get to kill something that they control, um, which could whiff also if they have nothing. If they don't have a creature or planeswalker in play, they, this backside could do nothing. Um, chapter 2, each opponent discards 3 cards, then mills 3 cards, so you put 6 more cards into their graveyard, which makes the second activation of Shieldred a lot easier. Then, chapter 3, and this is the terrifying part, put all creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control, exile true scriptures, return it face up. So it comes back as Shieldred, you can do this as many times as you can pay for it. Um, you know... Now that I'm thinking about it, even though Shieldred helps itself with Chapter 2, um, Chapter 1 and Chapter 3 could fully whiff. Like, if you're playing a control deck, you could get nothing. Chapter 3 is just creature cards. It's not Planeswalkers. It's not enchantments. It's not permanents. It's just Planeswalkers. Um... So I think I have to put the true scriptures at C tier. I think this is not, I think this is as, if it hits on all cylinders, it's pretty terrifying, but it could whiff. And that is just extremely disappointing. Maybe I could put it at B tier. Then I've got this weird thing where, look, okay, watch this. All of the Praetors are two steps below their Sagas right now. I think we can put... Okay, we can put True Scriptures at B tier. It's scary if it works. It's not scary if it doesn't. Period. Right in the middle. B tier. Okay. Um. Then let's go to our Red Boy. Urbrask is two red red for a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Praetor with first strike. Already pretty good. Um, hard to block, hard to uh, let through. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Urbrass deals one damage to target opponent, and you get to add one red mana. Then you can pay one red mana, exile Urbrask, then return it to its owner's, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Activate only as a sorcery, and only if you've cast three or more instants or sorcery spells this turn. So so far, this is the easiest one to transform. It only costs one mana, and all you have to do is cast three or more instants or sorceries. Which, if you've ever played a burn deck before, or a spell slinger deck before, that's very easy. Especially because every time you do it, you get a free red mana. Like, this is the best front side so far. I'm putting Urbrask at A tier. The front side of Urbrask is A tier. That is potent. Uh, easy to flip. It's hard to block because it has first strike. It's aggressive as a blocker because it has first strike. Um, it pings you and adds mana. It's just, it's a really good. It's really good. And then the backside is the great work. That art is insane. The great work reads chapter one. The Great Work deals 3 damage to target opponent and each creature they control. Okay, so pseudo board wipe, maybe. At the very least, it deals 3 damage to your opponent. That's really good. Can't whiff. That's nice. Chapter 2, create 3 treasure tokens. That's really good, too. Goddamn. Um, then Chapter 3, until end of your turn... Until end of turn, you may cast instant and sorcery spells from any graveyard. If a spell cast this way would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. The great work uh, returns face up. Um, so you can cast any instant and sorcery from any graveyard? Okay. I mean, that's... Okay. So because you don't have... Well, you have three treasures. 
for one. Um, so you get three free mana. By the time you cast or get to chapter three on the great work, let's say absolute ideal is you cast Urbrask on four, you flip it on turn three or five. So you've got five mana, chapter one, six mana, chapter two, seven mana, plus three treasure tokens. That's 10 mana by the time you get to Saga chapter three. So you can cast 10 mana at the very least 10 mana. I'm not talking about any other circumstance. If you've played a land each turn, you have 10 mana to work with on chapter three. And you can cast any instant and sorcery spell from any graveyard. It doesn't matter if it's your graveyard or your opponent's graveyard. This is a B. This is A. No, this is A. That's A tier. That's powerful. The first two chapters don't whiff whatsoever. The second chapters, the third chapter is not going to whiff either because you know you've put good instants and sorceries into your own graveyard. So even if your opponent doesn't have anything you want to cast, you're still going to find stuff in your graveyard you want to cast. You could just burn them right out. Although, I mean, if you've ever played a burn deck, maybe it, maybe, maybe this shores up the late game on burn decks. Maybe it just gets better because you, you don't have an end game plan for burn decks and then this one could help high up the bow that's a tier i'm so super excited to play that um so right now we've got um what is it, what? i can't read that we've got the great synthesis at s tier uh jin kataxis saga for a tier we have um the Ardent Etchings, Urabrask, and the Great Work. For B tier, we have the front face of Jingataxis and the Saga for Shieldred. Uh, C tier, we have Elish Norn, who's sort of terrifying, but not really because you can pay to make it not happen. And it's hard to flip. Um, and then D tier, we have Shieldred's front face, which is kind of just kills a thing. Um, but it, it's also impossible to flip. Not impossible to flip. It's hard to flip. Um, yeah. So let's move on to our last Praetor buddy, who is Vorinclex. Vorinclex is three green green for a 6-6 six, six Phyrexian Praetor with Trample and Reach. That's pretty good. When Vornclex enters the battlefield, search your library for up to two forest cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. Okay. Um, and then in order to transform him, you just have to pay the mana. So if you pay five to play him on turn five, you get two lands in your hand. Turn six, seven, eight. So it's, it's time sensitive. But if you're playing green properly, you've ramped quite a bit. Um, so maybe you play Vorinclex on turn four instead of five. And you can transform him by turn six. Um, six, six with trample and reach plus fetches two fours. I mean, that's pretty good. I would say that that's B tier. It's not as powerful as Urabrask, right? Not as powerful as Urbrask, because Urbrask is like continuously doing things, refilling your mana. Um, it's about the same as. Wait, can, is this gonna be better if I just like zoom the f in? That's a little bit better, yeah. Zoom the f in. It's about the same as Jingataxis. Jingataxis it protects itself. It's a 5-5, five, five, so it's a little bit less powerful, but it also helps cantrip stuff. So I would say Jin Jingataxis and Vorinclex are the specific colored 
mirrored images of each other. One of them has ward, one of them has trample and reach. One of them cantrips, the other one searches for lands. I would say that's fair. Put Vorinclex with Jinka taxes. Um, it can't whiff on anything. And I guess unless you have don't have two forest cards. It's also important to note that it doesn't say basic forest. It just says forest card. So you can get forest dual lands if they say forest in the subtype. Uh, which is also really good. Um, okay. So next, let's take a look at Vorinclex's Saga, The Grand Evolution. Chapter 1, Mill 10 Cards. Okay. Uh, put up to two creature cards from among the milled cards onto the battlefield. Okay. So you lose 10 cards, but you get two creatures, assuming you're a creature-heavy deck, which you should be if you're playing Vorinclex, I think. Um, that's pretty good. So you can whiff, which isn't great. Um, chapter two, distribute seven one, one counters among any number of target creatures you control. So you can put seven one, one counters on one creature. You could put seven or one, one, one counter on seven creatures and, you know, do the math, mix and match in between. That's pretty good. You can technically whiff on that as well, because if you have no creatures, uh, you can't put any counters anywhere. Uh, Vornclex is now the Grand Evolution, so you can't put counters on this card because it's an enchantment right now. Um, okay, Chapter 3. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain plus pay one. This creature fights target creature you don't control. So everything can fight. I like that. I don't love that it's a fight spell and not a bite spell. I think if it was bite, it would be really powerful. Again, you're looking at a situation where you could whiff if you have no creatures. Or worse yet, you play a powerful creature um, after you've distributed the seven counters. And so it's a little bit weaker and it fights something that it's going to die to. You're just trading at that point. Um, that's not great. I, I don't know. I think because you can potentially do a lot of damage, but potentially miss out on all aspects of this enchantment, I have to put it below Vorinclex. I have to put it at C tier. Um... Yeah. I think you've you've the front face of this card is more powerful than the back face at its least potential. At its least effective, the front face is better than the back face, and I can't say that for any of the other praetors in this set. There's an argument Urabrask is even with the great work. But yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I think that's it. That's the ranking right there. The great uh, Jinga Taxis Saga is S tier. Elish Norn, Urabrask, and Urabrask Saga are A tier. Jinga Taxis, Shieldred, Shieldred Saga, and Vorinclex are B tier. Elish Norn and the great Ev and Vorinclex's Saga are C tier, and F Shieldred is D tier. Those are my rankings for the five Praetors and their sagas from March of the Machine. If you disagree, feel free to argue in the comments below. I will be active. I will respond. I will listen. I, just don't tell me I'm an idiot. Have an argument. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me what you would change. I will link to this tier maker in the YouTube video so you can make your own tier. Send it to me on Twitter at Wyatt Fawcett. Um, send it to me on Instagram at ERPMTG. Comment with a link to it. I don't care. I appreciate you watching this video. I love and care uh, for all of the time that you put into consuming the content we put out here. 
I appreciate it endlessly, and I can't thank you enough for being in in this community with me, for welcoming me into the magic community. All of the friendly faces I get to meet and see and talk to about this amazing game all the time uh, make me feel so loved and cherished, and I can't thank you guys enough for welcoming me. Uh, again, please leave a comment if you have a different opinion or if I nailed it right on the head. Let me know in the comments. Um, and if you don't mind, we would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I think that we're trying to get access to a bunch of extra tools here on YouTube. And the only way to get those tools is to raise our sub number. Uh, that's one of the only numbers that YouTube cares about at this point in our channel's lifespan. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching these. Feel free to share it with your friends. Or make your own tier maker and tell me where you would put all of the five craters and their respective sagas. Thank you so much and be sure to check out our other videos or say hi on social media. I hope all of your hands are keeps and I hope all of your opponents mulligan. I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.